Hello, Empowered Warriors. Welcome to another exciting May episode. Now, don't get mad, but I want to mention or remind you to enter the May contest. And the reason why is because I truly believe that this is a really great opportunity for that person who is meant to win this. So if you are feeling called to enter the contest, please do. Listen, I'm not going to beg you. I'm not going to plead. I'm only inviting you. I'm inviting those of you out there that are listening to this and thinking, oh, I need to do that. But you haven't done it yet. And I know it gets busy. I know how life is. So it is my job to get on here and give you a lot of nudges. And as the month goes on, the nudges might become more like a little bit of a an elbow jab. And then by the end of the month, like the last week, it might sound more like your mom is nagging you. But the only reason why I'm doing this is with love because I really, I want you guys to take advantage of this opportunity. So make a memo in your phone if you're driving, if you're on the go, a reminder to come back, tell Alexa to remind you, whatever it takes for you to sign up for this contest, because it's amazing, if I say so myself. So in today's episode, this is something that has come up lately in my circle, where somebody asked in one of my groups, is TV bad for you? And I wanted to dive a little bit into this. Now, I want you to know that I'm not a specialist. I'm not a scientist in this subject. I know probably what the average person knows about reading, reading things about TV and the brain and everything, but I'm not actually going to go from that point. And you may or may not listen to this and actually be surprised at what you hear because I am not a TV person. I did not grow up with a TV. I grew up in the 70s. My friends had TV, you know, when HBO came out, whatever year it came out, 1980 or whatever, MTV, what was that, 1983? I didn't have any of those things. We didn't have cable. We got our first TV. I take it back. We did have a TV. We had black and white TV. And that was all we had from the time that I was born until I was 14. Or maybe, was that, is that right? Yes, 14 years old. And when I was 14 years old, my grandparents, I think they would come to visit us from Indiana and either they felt sorry for us or they themselves wanted to come and watch TV and did not want to watch TV on a black and white TV. But my parents were, I actually, I'm grateful that I grew up this way. I grew up not really with a lot of TV. And I watched, I think, the very basic TV shows on a black and white TV that was not upgraded until I was 14. So I watched like, oh my God, <laughs> Little House on the Prairie. I watched Mr. Rogers. Um, I watched the Waltons. Now I feel really old. <laughs> Honestly, I don't, I talk about this and I still feel like I'm like 30. So when I say things like that, I'm like, oh my gosh, like, Wow, that is a long time ago. But those were the shows I watched until I was 14. And I think my parents, we may have gotten cable. I don't remember. Or maybe we just it was just a colored TV set with an antenna. And we were able to get more channels. And I watched a little bit more when I was that age. But that's it. So throughout most of my adult life, I'm going to be perfectly candid. I've never been somebody that has watched a lot of TV. It hasn't honestly been of interest to me. It's not like, oh, I got to watch that. I feel like this subject comes up a lot in like the spiritual community and in the community of people who really want to change their life and transform and get out of their bad habits. So I wanted to address this today and offer you my perspective because I feel like I'm coming from a place of neutrality. Like I really am I'll be candid. I don't really care if you watch TV or you don't watch TV because I just, I don't have that in my identity to be for or against TV. But 
one thing that I've realized over time, and actually a friend said this to me a few, I don't know, a few years ago, I went over to her house and we were talking about TV and, you know, she's psychic and, you know, works with that world a lot. And she said to me, she's like, and I've had a couple of really like intuitive psychic people say this to me. So it wasn't just her where they said, you know, I really enjoy TV because sometimes I just need that opportunity to shut off my brain. And I had one of my shaman, my, my previous shaman, she said the same thing to me, not necessarily about TV, but about her phone. She said she likes to go up in her room after she's had a really hard day of seeing clients because her, her work is energetically taxing. And she likes to just lay on her bed and play games on her phone. And that is how she de-stresses. Now, I have been more of a person that if I want to de-stress classically, I am the person who will go lay in bed or it wouldn't be TV. It would be go out, going out and walking in the woods or reading something, meditating, journaling really relaxes me, listening to my binaural beats. I love that. But in the last two to three years, I have to say that I have really warmed up to TV and I'm not somebody who watches a lot of it, but when I find a show that I love, I am, I get really into it and I get really excited about it. So, um, and the other side of it is like that one friend of mine said, it just turns off my brain. And I say this with caution because I feel like some of you might be out there listening saying, well, why would you want to do that with every, and especially with the message that you're putting out there to use your brain to its fullest potential and to be aware of what you're putting in your brain and the habits that you create within your brain. Because as you probably already know, if you've listened to me for a while, you know that pretty much everything that we are in our lives is a result of the habits in our brain, the subconscious habits in our brain. So I won't go into that in detail, but I know there was, I talked about it in a recent episode. I don't remember which one. Getting back to TV, for me, I started to get into the occasional show because to be perfectly honest, I enjoyed it. It brought me joy actually to sit down and watch a TV show being aware. Now, I just want to put put this side note because I think this is really, really important. And it's something that's often forgotten when it comes to vices is being extremely att- intentional and aware of your what you want to get out of it. Do you want to get like just a break? Just give your body and your mind a break for an hour or so. Then that's great. When it becomes problematic, just like anything, just like any addiction, right? And you, I'm sure you've heard me talk about this before. Even our thoughts are addictive until we deal with them. When it becomes an addiction is when it becomes problematic. So this is just an opportunity to check yourself. When you watch TV, are you doing it because you want to escape? Are you doing it because it gives you joy. It's entertaining. You really like the show. Maybe you laugh. Maybe it just gives your nervous system a little bit of a jolt. Like for me personally, I love thrillers. Like that is my thing. I love, I don't really like super, super gory or violent or overly like visually disturbing things on TV, like I'm the person like when they're shooting and killing, I don't like that. I usually look away. But when it's like a mind thriller, like what was my most, what is one that I watched recently? Okay, I'm just going to name some of the shows that I've been watching that I've watched recently. Um, And usually I watch about one at a time. And And I'm not watching anything right now. So if you're listening out there and you know of a good thriller, please write in and let me know what your favorites are. So I watched The Sinner on, it's on Netflix and I think originally it airs on USA. So I'm only up to season three because I'm not, we don't have cable. We don't have any cable packages. We just have Prime and we have Netflix and, and the Disney Channel. So 
Bill Pullman in that is excellent and it's got just a really good storyline and really interesting storyline and it really goes into his the skeletons in his closet as well so and I love Bill Pullman so the sinner imposters I watched imposters recently that was really good Schitt's Creek and let me just tell you my mom told me about Schitt's Creek I don't think I would have been drawn to watch Schitt's Creek on my own but my, I was talking on the phone with my mom, and I tell you, my mom has refer, has told me about a couple of shows that I have loved, Schitt's Creek being one of them, and the other one is The Undoing with Nicole Kidman, Hugh Grant, Do- Donald Sutherland, fantastic. Like, that was one of those shows, like, once a year, my husband and I, we agree, we're going to subscribe to HBO for a month, maybe two months, because there really isn't there really isn't much on on HBO and because we're not really big on watching a lot of TV there really isn't much on HBO that I want to watch but when it comes to The Undoing with no, Nicole Kidman or even what was the one with Reese Witherspoon Big Little Lies and Little Fires Everywhere those were all amazing and I am a sucker for those, I don't know, I, I'm reluctant to say chick flicks because I, I know my husband watched those shows with me too. I'm just really, when I see Reese Witherspoon and Nicole Kidman and anything, I am there. I'm signing up for HBO. She's got me, okay? Whatever it is, whatever magic Reese Witherspoon is doing to draw people like me in, it's working. And I know that she's an amazing businesswoman, so hats off to Reese Witherspoon. It's funny too, because when I was visiting my parents recently, we were trying to find a movie to watch and we ended up watching Legally Blonde, the original. So, so good. Such a classic. So yeah, so we subscribe to HBO, watch our shows and then unsubscribe. Same with my husband. I never really liked Game of Thrones. That's just not my jam. I tried, not a fan of that, but we did the same with Game of Thrones. And another show I watched recently, I actually forgot about this until I was like looking up all these shows and getting the the names, is Tell Me Your Secrets. And it's funny because I just I just watched that, I don't know, two months ago. That was really, really good. That was another thriller woman's in a um, witness protection. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. Witness protection program angry mom trying to find her um, son's or her daughter excuse me her daughter's killer just really really good and not too crazy disturbing in my opinion now whatever floats your boat I think the key is like I said to be really intentional what do you hope to gain from this is it entertainment laughter relaxation whatever it is and to also be aware of your of your intention again intention but be aware if it's starting to feel like an addiction like if you're getting into the binging of the shows now for me personally my goal is to really watch no more than two at a time I have been known to binge my husband has given me a hard time about that and that is something I'm human I'm just being completely transparent because these types of shows just, you know, they get my, my curiosity, they get my brain going, like, there's a reason why TV shows are so successful, right? There's a reason why movie, there's a reason why this kind of entertainment is successful. So again, don't do what I did. (laughs) Set your intention. When you're noticing that you want to get just, you know, Netflix makes it so easy to go into right into the next one cut yourself off, move your attention, whatever you need to do, turn off the TV, whatever it is, and do something else. And you'd be surprised that when you decide and declare that you're only going to watch something for one hour, maybe two hours, and then you cut yourself off and move your attention and do something else, your brain forgets. It's not like, oh, I got to go back, right? So warriors, this is kind of a short episode. I don't really have more to say on the subject, but I just feel like 
I think what I really want to hone in on is like anything, right? Anything, almost anything can be an addiction. Like I love buying journals and I love buying pens and markers and paper and stationery, not really like the stationery you write letters on, but I like to go to Staples and buy like the different color tapes. And for me, that just brings me pleasure and joy. And I'll be completely honest, I used to hoard, I used to buy these things and just hoard them in my art caddy and never use them. And then I realized, what is my intention behind hoarding? Like, so I can just look at them. So I started to become really intentional about my habits and and, and hoarding and my addictions because really there is no right or wrong until it's wrong for you. I mean, yes, there are the universal right things or there are the universal wrong things when it comes to how we treat each other. But when it comes to right or wrong, I feel like society is so quick to judge about what is right and what is wrong. So my invitation is to align yourself and learn about yourself and who you are. Who are you? Who are you? Are you somebody that finds pleasure in watching an hour of TV every day and it just helps you? Or are you somebody that when you do watch TV, you realize, hey, you know, it's turning off my creativity. Maybe I'm not going to watch TV right now. And that is another thing, right? There's a season for everything. So Some people notice that they maybe watch more TV when they're in between projects, right? Especially for entrepreneurs, you just finished a big project. All right, let's just watch a movie or something or or let's catch up on some shows. So it's all about what is right for you. What is right for you? And my invitation to you is if it's TV or if it's drinking a margarita or buying art supplies at Staples. What brings you joy? What gives you pleasure? What helps you relax? What entertains you? What fills your cup? And also setting an intention for what you were for what is causing you to want to do these things. And getting really, really crystal clear with that intention. And if you do that, then you're never going to feel bad again for your behaviors. And here's another thing about habits. If you make a mistake, so I just admitted to you that occasionally I binge on three, I'll I'll watch three episodes of a show if I'm really enjoying it. And then I notice, oh, you know, I don't, I don't feel so good after sitting on the couch for three hours watching, having this large screen in my eyes. And I notice, I, I feel that in my body and I know it doesn't feel good. Same with phone addiction. Like I always know when I'm at my limit with my phone and I've really drawn really clear boundaries around my phone use and my computer use because I know what it feels like. It feels icky. It literally has been starting to feel like, I don't want to say a stomach ache, but like how I would feel before I'm going to get nauseous. Like kind of, I feel it in my sinuses. Like I feel like kind of I get a headache or like, like my head's going to explode. And I know at that point that I've gone way, way too far. So what are your limits? What are your boundaries? What are the parameters that you set within yourself in order for you to have a successful life in order for you to have a life of joy and pleasure and ease and well being in order to have a life of fire of financial abundance and and an inner peace and radiance and energy balance. What is it, warriors? And really only you know the answer to that. Only you know the answer to that. And with that, warriors, I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day, your evening, no matter where you are in the globe. I am so grateful for you. Remember to apply if it's May of 2021 and you're listening. And if it's after May of 2021, I don't think I'm going to be editing this contest out of the episode. So sorry about that, Warriors. And until next time, take care. Thank you so much for listening to the Empowered Warrior podcast. It is an honor and a privilege to have you as a listener. 
If you've enjoyed listening to this podcast and would like to help others pave their pathway to freedom, end their disempowerment and suffering, and become an empowered warrior, please share this podcast with your friends and family. Also, it is my intention to help humanity grow and evolve to their highest potential. So if you really enjoy what you're hearing, please help me spread the word by leaving a review in iTunes. Thank you again, and I am so grateful to be able to serve you in this very exciting way.